Okay, so uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the naming compounds. So in the first section, we stuck solely with ionic compounds. In the second section, we stuck solely with covalent uh, molecules. Uh, now in this section, we're going to uh, group them all together. So <clears throat> it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Uh, so the first thing I want to do, I want to show you a flow chart that's going to help you. We've added, it's the same flow chart that you saw earlier. We're just going to add one section to it. Um, so really here, here it is. And it's pretty straightforward. When you're given, when you're given a formula, okay, and this is for formulas, when you're given a formula, this is what you need to ask yourself. Okay, so if you're given, um, you know, H2S, right, if you're given H2S, first thing you need to say is, okay, is there a metal? Right, you're looking right there, is there a metal? Well, hydrogen is a non-metal, sulfur is a non-metal, so your answer here is no. Okay, so then you come down and you say, then you use your prefixes. Do not use mono for the first element. So here we're going to use our prefixes. So we would be dihydrogen or sulfide. Okay, and you may need to go back and watch the video on naming covalent compounds or naming covalent molecules. Okay. Uh, Oh, this isn't working. There we go. All right, let's say I give you a different one. Let's say I give you Fe03. Okay, again, is there a metal? Well, your metal is going to be written first because that's going to make the positive, uh, the positive ion and positive is always written first. So if there's a metal, it's going to be written first. So uh, iron is a metal. So you're coming here. Yes. Is it binary? Well, we've got iron and we've got oxygen. So that's only two. So again, yes. All right, and we'll come down here. Does the metal make more than one charge? Is iron a transition metal? Yes, it is. So it does make more than one charge. So again, we're going to come here, down. All right, and then we're going to look and it's going to tell us to use Roman numerals to distinguish the charge. Okay, on the cation and add IDE to the end of the anion. Okay, so it would be iron. Okay, we're going to uncross the, the uh, subscript to make the charge. So it's iron 3. And then I add IDE to the end. Okay. Again, this individually is not difficult. It's the difficulty comes when we're throwing it all, throwing them all together, and and we ask you to, to figure it out. Okay, that's why we separated it into sections first. Okay, uh, so you may need to go back and, and watch the naming covalent compounds. And you may need to go back and watch naming the ionic compounds to get your rules. But this is the flowchart to get that done.